Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited, where we've got something a little bit different for you today. As you can see from the title and thumbnail, we have ourselves our very first Hurricane. This is the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer with a three liter high output Hurricane engine. Now we've done a couple of previous videos on this engine before, mainly just technical talking points. I'll go ahead and list those in the description down below, but this is our first opportunity to actually drive one. And I wanna give you guys my first impressions because as you know, this is the likely replacement for the Hemi engine. So I wanna see how it compares directly. Now, I have driven quite a few of these Grand Wagoneers with both the 5.7 and especially the 6.4 Hemi engine, so I'll be able to do a back-to-back -back comparison for you. Now, it's important to note that this is not a review of the Grand Wagoneer platform itself. This is simply the only vehicle that we have so far confirmed that will have the Hurricane engine, so this is our first one. That's what I'll be driving. So the first thing we need to realize here is that this vehicle is $112,000, which is a ridiculous sum of money. So I'm just gonna go ahead and ignore all the luxury SUV aspects of this car. We are strictly focusing on the engine here. And that means the very first thing I wanna think about is exhaust note. Now, whatever you guys think of Chrysler, Stellantis, whatever you wanna call them, whatever you think of them, they are very, very good about having a great exhaust tone, especially for their muscle cars. Now, like I said, I've driven a lot of these Grand Wagoneers, and especially with the 6.4 liter models, they have got the exhaust tone absolutely dialed because it sounds meaty and throaty right off the bottom, but it is not obnoxious, which is a very hard line to tow, but they've got it down to a science. You know, if you've ever heard a Challenger 392, Charger 392, anything like that, they sound absolutely fantastic. The Grand Wagoneer with a 392 is no different. So how is it going to sound with this three liter Hurricane? Now, obviously I'm not expecting the same sort of tone, but let's take a listen and see how it sounds. Well, as expected, that is underwhelming. When you've only got three liters to work with, you're just not going to have that same sort of tone. And honestly, that's a large part of why people like the Hemi engine is because of that throaty sound. So we're missing a bit of that tone. Even out of the exhaust, there's still nothing really special happening there. Let's talk about the driving experience. What are we going to get out of that? Now, this is going to be my first drive in this vehicle, so you're gonna get my honest opinions right off the bat. Now, something I'm noticing before I even drive away is that the rev limit is set at 5,800 RPM. Now, I'm not revving it that high, but I can see on the tachometer that that's where the red line is. And to me, that seems very, very low. I know they probably size these turbochargers small, so it'll give you some good punch down the bottom, but still, 5,800 RPM, that's pretty low. I imagine that the tuners will almost immediately raise that up to a more reasonable level like 6,500, somewhere around there. And again, the Hemi engine, one of the great features of a V8 engine is that it's got that great punch down low, that great torque. And it's really hard to replicate that even if you have a twin turbo six, it's really got some smaller turbos on there to really try to give you that punch, that same feel. I think for me right now, as I'm driving it, it doesn't quite feel the same as the Hemi engine does. It does have some solid mid-range to it, but again, you have turbos that are gonna have to spool themselves up a little bit, no matter how small that they are, so it doesn't quite have that immediate hit 
that the Hemi engine does. All right, we're gonna get on the highway here, get up to speed at a reasonable pace, see what kind of acceleration this thing has. Okay, there's the boost that we were looking for. It does take longer to come in than I expected. Like I said, it's got a decent mid-range, but it really starts to come on more at the top end. That's a little bit surprising to me. I thought they would have tuned it more for the mid-range, but it's definitely got a ton of power. And I would say if you probably ran it back to back with a 392, it'd be pretty close between the two of them. I think this thing would probably win, but it's fairly close. Now, as you'd probably expect on a vehicle that costs this much, it is very smooth in here, very quiet. The engine has almost no noticeable vibration. Now, not surprisingly, these vehicles are equipped with the same eight-speed transmission that comes in a variety of other Stellantis models. Also the Ram trucks, the Grand Cherokees, Chargers, Challengers, all those sorts of things. These transmissions are very, very good. Now, I am, as my primary occupation, a transmission technician at a dealer, and I can tell you that these transmissions are very, very good, very reliable, very strong, so they're a great pairing to go with this engine. Now, I don't wanna mislead you guys. This engine is not slow by any means, and you have to think about the vehicle that it's in. This vehicle, if I were to take a guess, probably weighs somewhere around 5,000 or 5,500 pounds. It's a big girl, and that's a lot to get moving for a three liter engine. It's not slow, I'm just saying that it doesn't have that quite punch off the bottom that I would have expected. Now that being said, I'm also not driving this thing in an ultra spirited mode. I'm not flooring the thing from a stop. So if you were to drive it that way, maybe it would feel a bit more punchy. I'm just driving it in your normal everyday kind of driving around mode. And it just feels a little bit soft on the bottom end. But you have to remember too that that's merely a matter of tuning and I'm pretty sure that Aftermarket tuning companies have already come out with some stuff for this engine that are gonna really boost that and change the driving strategy to help it improve even more. And honestly, as a new model, things are going to improve and change as time goes on too. Now, that kind of leads me into my next point. You guys are gonna be asking about reliability. Do I think it's going to be reliable? Honestly, there's literally no way to answer that. I usually say, give it two years when a brand new model comes out, you gotta give it two years for issues to present themselves and see how reliable it's going to be. Now, with that being said, this three liter engine is basically just an extension of the two liter turbocharged engine that's already out that they've been using for a couple of years. It's the same engine architecture, they just added on a couple more cylinders and changed a couple other minor things. Now the two liter has been doing pretty well. We haven't seen a ton of issues with that. So that gives me good hope that this three liter will be pretty solid as well. You have to remember that when you design an engine to be turbocharged from the factory, they're going to be using a lot stronger components in there and it should hold up to whatever you're gonna throw at it. Obviously there is a lot of components in there and it will be expensive to fix, but that's literally any new car that there's no difference. Now, as far as this engine bay goes, I think they've done a great job of dressing it up and making it look really nice. And I have to say, this may not seem like it to everyone else, but for a technician, that engine bay has quite a bit of room in it. Now, it may seem like it's a ton of stuff in there and really complicated, but as compared to a lot of other new vehicles, this engine bay has quite a bit of room to work, which is actually a really nice thing because they've been trending the other way for so long that it's become almost impossible to work on these cars. Seeing a little bit of room in there, oh, it makes me happy because I know that when these things do have problems, which all engines do, and they will inevitably have something go wrong with them, I might actually be able to fix it without breaking my back. All right, let's run this thing back to the shop, see if we notice anything else. Okay, when that thing gets up in the RPM range, it has absolutely got some juice behind it. That thing rips. Also, a quick note for those of you who are saying, I can't believe you're ripping on a brand new car. You gotta break that thing in. First of all, there is no break-in procedure for new vehicles anymore. You just drive the things, they're totally fine. Second of all, I'm not ripping on this thing. As I said, I'm driving it in a normal manner. This isn't even really spirited driving. I'm not flooring the thing. I'm not running it up to the red line. I'm just driving the car. So when driving this thing at steady state throttle about 60 miles an hour, you don't need to actually downshift three and four times to get into the meat of the power band. It does have a fairly bulky mid-range. It's more so the low, low end that I'm talking about where it takes a little bit more to really get it going. 
Now essentially, as a direct comparison to the Hemi engine, we're basically just talking about engine characteristic differences. So it depends on the type of feel you want out of your engine when you're driving it. Turbo vehicles are always a different experience to where they are generally a little soft on the bottom and then it's this rush of power all the way up to the point at which it's trying to shift. Whereas the Hemi engines are more like your classic V8s where it's got that great big meaty mid-range, that punch down low, but then it kind of runs out of breath up top, starts to wheeze a little bit before it shifts. So it just depends what do you want your engine to do, what characteristics do you want? Because there's no denying that that turbo rush up top is an absolute ball. So I know some of the concerns you guys have mentioned before is that you're worried about both the complexity and how expensive these engines are going to be to repair. And those are both very valid concerns, but to be honest, that's where the whole entire industry is going. All manufacturers are headed this same direction. So it is going to be expensive to repair these things and they are going to be complicated. But that being said, an inline six twin turbo engine, hilariously enough <laughs> to say this, is more on the simple end of things than a lot of the other options we could have gotten. So I'm actually okay with it. I don't think it's gonna be that bad complexity wise. I do think it's going to be very expensive to fix, but pretty much all new engines are expensive to fix. So it definitely is a little bit of a barrier to entry if you are trying to get into cars and you wanna modify things to start with one that is more complicated. But I do think that in, like I said, inline six twin turbo, I think it's going to be a little bit less complex than some of the other options we could have had, especially when you compare it to engines like, say, the Eco Diesel V6 turbo. That engine is a complete nightmare to work on. Absolute nightmare. I think you guys know my personal feelings about the Eco Diesel. Also, in driving this engine back to back here with the Eco Diesel, it's amazing the difference. Now, obviously, this engine isn't going to be able to produce the same type of torque numbers as the Eco Diesel does in the same way, the same fashion, I should say. But my goodness, this thing feels twice as fast as an Eco Diesel engine. And I wouldn't be surprised if the torque rating was only a little bit lower or basically the same of what an Eco Diesel engine can provide. I'm literally running out of any excuse whatsoever for anyone to have an eco diesel engine. Now, I know you guys know that that's just a personal thing of mine, but I'm not joking. You wanna talk about complexity? You wanna talk about cost to repair? You wanna talk about anything? The eco diesel makes no sense whatsoever at all. So let's ask the big question here. If you're used to a Hemi engine and you jump in this vehicle, are you going to like the way that it drives? In my opinion, no. You're not, it's too different of an experience. It doesn't deliver the power at all the same way. So it's easy to be like, nah, that's not my thing. Because if you're used to a big V8 engine, that's the way you want it. This isn't going to give you what you want. However, if you have your mind open and you enjoy different types of engines out there that do deliver their power in a different way, I think you'll recognize that this is a really solid platform. And really soon after they really get these things out there in the public, these things are going to start making a ton of power. Now, I know they're getting rid of the Charger and Challenger. It'd be interesting to see what sort of options they replace those with. I don't know if they will because everything's trending towards the kind of the SUV thing right now or the, the crossover type of vehicles. But if they do come out with another car version and they actually put this Hurricane engine in there, I can guarantee you tuners are gonna go nuts with this thing and it is going to get very fast, very quick, and very powerful. And now the important question, if it were my money, if I was buying this vehicle, would I get it with the 392 Hemi engine or would I go with this new three liter high output Hurricane engine? I gotta stick with the 392 to be honest. When you fire up those 392s, you know, obviously the love of cars is an audio thing as much as it is anything else. And when you fire that engine up with a 392, it sounds incredible. And when you get on it from a stop sign, man, it's part of what makes me happy about driving cars. And this three liter twin turbo, it's got a ton of power and it's going to be very, very fast, but it just doesn't give you that same audio noise that you're looking for. I mean, listen to this. That's just not what I'm looking for in my automotive journey. So. Anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this. Thank you for coming along in this journey of my first impressions with driving a Hurricane vehicle. We'll see you guys next time on Reignited.